Hello, in this tutorial we are going to go through the process of conducting incremental dynamic analysis or IDA using double IDAP. So we will go ahead and open double IDAP. Once double IDAP is open, we'll go ahead and start a new project by clicking the new button. I'll select a location to save the project and I will call it IDA project. I will use the kilonewton and meter units. I will start by defining my SDOF system. I will use a mass of one ton, period of one second and 5% damping. I will include system P delta by specifying a stability coefficient of 0.025. Then I will click Submit. For the system model, I will use an IMK deteriorating bilinear material. This model is defined using three deformation parameters and three force parameters to define the backbone curve. I will leave those as they are. I will change some of those values a bit. Notice here that once you change any of those parameters, this figure over here on the right will be updated to show a sample response of the expected behavior. For the cyclic deterioration parameter, you can specify this value lambda in order to control how much deterioration in strength and stiffness your model should have. By increasing this value, the deterioration becomes less. So I will use here a value of 80 for lambda. You can co also control the asymmetric uh, deterioration behavior by controlling the D plus and D minus values. For now, I will leave it just at one and one, symmetric. You can also add a smooth transition between the loading and hardening slopes by checking this box. As you see here, now, there, now you have a transition zone that's smooth like this. You can control those parameters based on the manual to control how this smoothening looks. So for now, I'll just uncheck this box and keep the default uh, non-smooth uh, behavior. So I'll go ahead and click Submit. For the ground motion, since this is an incremental dynamic analysis, it would be a better example to use multiple records. So I will browse for the my ground motion set. For this case, I will use the support files that came with double IDAP. Specifically, I will use the LMSR ground motion set. So I will select the folder. I will use a scale factor of one and then I will click submit. Now that the ground motion data has been imported, I can check to make sure everything was imported correctly by clicking on the scope. So it seems that the ground motions are imported correctly. So I close this window. The final step is to define the analysis type. In this tutorial, we are using incremental dynamic analysis. So we'll check this radio button and click next. For incremental dynamic analysis, we need to specify the incremental step in units of G. For this project, I will use a 0.05 G as an incremental step. You can also specify displacement and acceleration limits at which collapse will occur. For the displacement, I will just specify a large value since my model is already deteriorating and it would collapse on its own eventually. For the acceleration limit, I will just keep it at 5G. 
I will go ahead and click submit. I get a notification box that tells me that if I want, do you want to define seismic hazard or not? Now, seismic hazard is needed to calculate the mean annual frequency of collapse and the associated probability of collapse. So you will get this notification box if you are doing an incremental dynamic analysis with multiple ground motions, which is this case. For now, I will use I will say yes, define the hazard. For defining the seismic hazard, the user has two options. We'll start with the easier option, which is user defined hazard curve. If I select this one, I will need to browse for a file, a text file that contains two columns of data. The first column is the spectral acceleration in units of G. The second column is the mean annual frequency of exceedance. If I don't have this data and if my SDUF is located in the United States, I can use the USGS seismic hazard data maps to interpolate and find my hazard curve. For this option, you will need first to browse for the hazard maps data folder so this one is located with the supporting files that you downloaded with double ida so i will browse for this folder here it is so i will select the folder then i will need to specify the location of my sduf where i want the hazard uh, curve so you need to specify the latitude, the longitude, the period, as well as the shear wave velocity of the soil or the soil condition. So I will leave the latitude and the longitude as they are. The period is one similar to my SDUF system and the soil condition has 259 meter per second shear wave velocity. I go ahead and click submit. So now it's extracting the hazard data. Once it's done, it will close automatically. I can click on the scope before I run the analysis and make sure that my project is defined correctly. So it seems everything is okay. So I close this one. I go ahead and run the analysis. I get the notification regarding the integration method. So I will use the default integration method so i go ahead and click proceed so now the ida analysis is being run as we see here from the status box so we will wait one minute or so a couple of minutes until this analysis is done So now that the analysis has been concluded, we'll go ahead and view the results. For IDA analysis, we have five different plots that we can visualize. The IDA analysis, we'll go ahead with the first one, which is the IDA curves and click view. So in this figure, the ground motions now are selected to all. So this is all the ground motions. The IDA for each one is plotted in gray lines. We see the median in solid red line and the 16th and 84th percentile IDA curves in dashed red lines. So this is the spectral acceleration versus the displacement. You can show the legend that tells you what are those lines you are looking at. You can look at a specific IDA curve for a specific ground motion. You can inspect the values at each incremental step. You can zoom in and zoom out as, as well as saving the figure. You can also normalize the x-axis by a given value 
So in this way, you are transforming the displacement into a drift ratio. So if I check this box, it automatically normalized the axis with the H value or the height of the SDOF. So now I have the drift ratio. You can change this value as you want. So now the second plot we are going to look at is a plot that shows us the incremental force displacement at each incremental point. How did the system behave at each spectral acceleration or at each scale factor? So for this one, I will go to this plot, incremental force displacement. So this is a very useful plot. So for example, here, if I go to the Northridge 94 earthquake, Canoga Park record, I see that I had to scale this ground motion 13 times in order to reach collapse. If I move the slider to the left, I go to increment number one, where the scale factor was zero. If I move one step to the right, so I go to the second increment, where the scale factor was 0.1 and the spectral acceleration is 0.05g, which we specified as the increment step. So now the system is still elastic. Increment two, still elastic. Then by increment number three, plastification and nonlinearity starting to occur. The more I move to the right with higher scale factor and higher uh, earthquake or seismic intensity, the more the nonlinear or the plastic deformations become. At the last increment number 13, the system have reached zero force which means collapse in this case. You can do this for any ground motion that you have. The second plot is displacement fragility at target SA. So let's look at this plot. So this plot, you can specify a given spectral acceleration, let's say 0.1g, you can do this using also the slider. So here it tells me that at point 0.1g, all those scatter that I see here is for each ground motion. And pretty much at this point of point 0.1g, all the ground motions caused an elastic response in the system. So you see that the dispersion of this fitted log normal curve, the red line is almost zero. And the median is a very small displacement that's less than delta y or the yield displacement or yield deformation of my system. If I go to a higher spectral acceleration, you will see that at 0.5g for instance, only 24 ground motions reach this spectral acceleration without collapsing. And now I see more scatter in uh, my deformations. If I go at 1G, we see that only three ground motions reached 1G spectral acceleration. And again, they are fitted with this log normal CDF. So we'll go ahead and close this figure. For the collapse fragility curve, the third one, let's go ahead and click view. So this figure shows the collapse intensities for each of the ground motions here in this uh, as a gray uh, circle markers over here. And those are fitted again with a log normal distribution. You can see here the median collapse intensity in units of G as well as the dispersion of this curve. Since we defined the seismic hazard, we see here the mean annual frequency of collapse being calculated, as well as the probability of collapse, which in this case is 16.55% in 50 years. We'll go ahead and close this figure. The last figure is basically a composite plot of the IDA curve and the displacement fragility, but all in one plot. So again, it's similar to what we discussed before. So if you say here 0.5G, for example, you will see this 
dashed blue line representing the level that you are looking at and you see here the displacement fragility if i move this to 1g again you are only intersecting three ground motions the value of these deformations are shown here and fitted with the log normal distribution so this is it for the visualization of the ida results for saving the results you can just click save results and then double idap will save all the results data this will be saved in the location where you specified for your project so now you have a new folder the folder called results dash project ida the name of the project if you go inside you will see for each of the ground motions you will see a, a separate file that's called the ida curve inside you will see the data for each ida curve in terms of displacement and acceleration for the collapse fragility curve you will see two file one that has the empirical collapse fragility data for each of the ground motions the other one is the data for the fitted log normal as well as the median and dispersion and as always, for any project, you will see the file that contains the project summary.